Breaking news from around your world on this Thursday, May 16th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. A new pest that threatens key agricultural commodities is spreading through China as the nation is reeling from an African swine fever epidemic that may wipe out hundreds of millions of hogs. The new pest is called the fall army worm, a moth native to Central America that feeds voraciously on many commodity crops while in its caterpillar phase. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Foreign Agriculture Service said in an advisory that the pest has no natural predators in China and its presence may result in lower production and crop quality. Experts report that there is a high probability that the pest will spread across all of China's grain production area within the next 12 months. Unchecked, the pest has been shown to reduce corn yields elsewhere in the world up to 20 percent. It's unclear how China's yields will be affected. Judging by how the moth has affected food production in other parts of the world, the impact could be significant. President Donald Trump said on Thursday he hoped the United States was not heading to war with Iran as he prepared to meet with Switzerland President Uli Maurer, whose nation has served as a diplomatic conduit between the two countries. Asked if Washington was going to war with Tehran, Trump told reporters he hoped not as he greeted Moore at the White House. Tensions have escalated in recent days with increasing concerns about a potential U.S.-Iran conflict. Earlier this week, the U.S. pulled some diplomatic staff from its embassy in Baghdad following weekend attacks on four oil tankers in the Gulf. Switzerland, a neutral country, has historically been a liaison between the United States and Iran, which have no diplomatic relations. The Washington Post, citing unnamed U.S. officials, reported late Wednesday that Trump preferred a diplomatic route with Iran and direct talks with its leaders, but worried that some of his advisors were pushing for war. On Thursday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi welcomed what she called Trump's lack of appetite for military conflict with Tehran. Speculation is rising in South Korea that President Trump could visit the Korean demilitarized zone during what would be his second visit to South Korea. Trump is expected to visit Seoul and meet with South Korean President Moon Jae-in following the G20 summit in Osaka, Japan. A spokesperson for President Moon neither confirmed nor ruled out a potential Trump visit to the DMZ when asked on Thursday whether a trip to the border region is on the agenda. Trump previously attempted to visit the DMZ during his state visit in 2017 at the height of tensions, but the trip was canceled due to bad weather. A Trump visit to the DMZ in June could present an opportunity for a potential trilateral summit involving him, Kim Jong-un and Moon at the border. Trump and Moon met at the White House in April, and both sides have issued muted responses to North Korea's latest tests of missiles. But the Trump administration also confiscated a North Korean cargo vessel suspected of exporting illicit coal to Indonesia, a move Pyongyang has condemned as theft. Seoul and Washington may also need to coordinate on denuclearization objectives. British Prime Minister Theresa May will set out a timetable for her departure in early June after the latest attempt to get her Brexit deal approved by Parliament. That's according to Graham Brady, chairman of the 1922 committee that can make or break party leaders. Following a meeting between his committee's executive and May in Parliament, he said, The Prime Minister is determined to secure our departure from the European Union. May has promised to step down after her Brexit deal is approved by lawmakers. But many in her party want her to set out clearly when she will quit if the agreement is rejected for a fourth time and others are demanding her immediate departure. The government has said lawmakers will be able to debate and vote on the withdrawal agreement bill, the legislation required to enact May's Brexit deal in the week starting June 3rd. May, who became Prime Minister in the chaos that followed the 2016 referendum when Britons voted 52 to 48 percent to leave the EU, survived a no-confidence vote of her Conservative lawmakers in December. Three years after Britain voted to leave the European Union, there is little clarity over when, how, and even whether Brexit will happen, prompting some in her party to call for a new approach to the country's biggest policy shift in more than 40 years. 
President Trump used a Thursday speech to propose a new merit-based immigration system favoring high-skilled immigrants, such as scientists and engineers, instead of the largely family-based system currently in place. The latest effort, spearheaded by Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner, focuses on beefing up border security and rethinking the green card system so that it would favor people with high-level skills, degrees, and job offers instead of relatives of those already in the country. A shift to a more merit-based system prioritizing high-skilled workers would mark a dramatic departure from the nation's largely family-based approach, which officials said gives roughly 66% of green cards to those with family ties and only 12% to those based on skills. The plan does not address undocumented migrants or the 3.6 million dreamers brought into the country illegally as children. Efforts to overhaul the immigration system have gone nowhere for three decades amid deeply divided Republicans and Democrats. Republicans, familiar with the plan, said it had little chance of passing, and White House officials acknowledged that it was partly crafted to help unify Republicans in the 2020 election. The U.S. birth rate dropped to a 32-year low last year, according to new data released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. About 3.8 million babies were born in the U.S. in 2018, 2% fewer than the previous year. It was the fourth straight annual decline. The fertility rate in 2018 was again below replacement, the level at which a given generation can exactly replace itself. The data show the rate has generally been below replacement since 1971 and consistently below replacement for the last decade. The replacement rate is 2,100 births per 1,000 women. The 2018 rate was 1.728 births per woman. Donna Strobino, a professor at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, said, We are clearly in the throes of major social change with regard to women getting married and choosing to have children. President Trump declared a national emergency to counter threats against U.S. communication networks, giving the federal government power to ban foreign companies supplying technology that poses an unacceptable risk to the national security of the United States. Trump did not name any specific companies in his order, but after he issued it, the Department of Commerce announced that Chinese telecommunications giant Huawei Technologies and its affiliates had been added to the Bureau of Industry and Security Entity list, a move that made it harder for the world's third largest smartphone maker to do business with American companies. The Trump administration has said Huawei equipment could be used by Beijing for spying, which the company denies. China vowed Thursday to resolutely safeguard Chinese companies. A foreign ministry spokesman, Liu Kang, criticized the moves as an abuse of export control measures. A federal judge has directed the Food and Drug Administration to speed up its review of electronic cigarettes, saying the delay amounts to a dereliction of duty. Maryland U.S. District Judge Paul Grimm on Wednesday gave the FDA two weeks to submit a specific plan of action for reviewing e-cigarettes. Manufacturers will have to comply. Grimm said manufacturers long have been on notice that they will have to submit their products for FDA reviews. The FDA said it's reviewing the decision. The agency was given authority to regulate e-cigarettes in 2016, but when the Trump administration took over, the FDA delayed enforcement until 2022. A lawsuit filed in a Maryland court last year by the American Academy of Pediatrics and other groups argued that the FDA's delay led to an increase in underage vaping. E-cigarette makers were able to bring their products to market with little to no regulation or standards. Bob Hawke, who served as Australian Prime Minister from 1983 to 1991, died on Thursday at the age of 89. Prime Minister Scott Morrison hailed Hawke's ability to speak to all Australians. On social media, he said Hawke was a great Australian who led and served our country with passion, courage, and an intellectual horsepower that made our country stronger. Hawke's death comes ahead of a Saturday general election, with his opposition Labour Party narrowly ahead in the polls. 
Hawk, a former trade union leader, was first elected to Parliament in 1980 and was named leader of the center-left Labour Party less than a month before a snap general election in 1983 when Hawke became Australia's 23rd Prime Minister. Inheriting an economy languishing in recession and with double-digit unemployment and inflation, Hawke embraced economic deregulation that belied his connections with Australia's largest trade unions. Hawk won support from the political left to float the Australian dollar, remove controls on foreign exchange and interest rates, and lower tariffs on imports within months of his inauguration. The reforms triggered a wave of economic growth, allowing Hawk to introduce universal health care, strengthen social security for poor families, and enact stronger environmental legislation. The Rolling Stones are ready to get back on the road after postponing their North American tour because Mick Jagger needed medical treatment. The legendary rock group announced Thursday that the No Filter Tour will kick off in Chicago with two shows June 21st and 25th. All the cities previously postponed are locked in and there's a new date in New Orleans. Tickets sold for the original dates will be honored, but those who can't attend can get refunds by accessing their Ticketmaster accounts. The group said in a statement, the concerts will feature classic hits such as Sympathy for the Devil and Paint It Black. The No Filter Tour was slated to start April 20th in Miami. However, doctors told the 75-year-old Jagger in late March he couldn't go on tour because he needed heart valve replacement surgery. Jagger, via his Twitter account, released a video this week showing him demonstrating the iconic footwork that is part of his stage persona, showing everyone he still moves like Jagger. And that's your update for this Thursday, May 16th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.